Hello, my name's Stuart Hamlin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm teaching the next lesson in the Happy Hips, Happy Knees and Happy Feet series. I should warn you, it's a challenging lesson to do. So as ever with a Feldenkrais lesson, I encourage you to take things slowly, um, keep within a very easy range of motion. And if a movement feels uncomfortable, then certainly don't go into pain. Always respect your own limits. Um, but I hope you will love the lesson as much as I do. It has some very interesting movements to come as the lesson develops. Please begin by lying down on your back. And just take a moment to notice how you make contact into the floor. Notice how your ribs sit down into the floor. Do you get a feeling your back is actually resting down into the floor or maybe your ribs are tending to poke up towards the ceiling so which is often the case with me so just take a moment to notice the overall contact think about how the legs are organized how you've chosen to place the two arms and then please just roll the head a little bit from one side to the other as ever giving yourself permission to stay within this easy, easy range. And I'm just asking the question, how is it to turn my head to the right, say, compared to the left? And then pause, come to the center, and please bring both your legs to standing. So I like to begin my lessons with, um, it's kind of like a little warm up when we think about the pelvic clock. Um, and this clock, this imaginary clock, is painted on the back of your pants. 12 o'clock is towards the head and 6 o'clock is towards the feet. Could you begin to press down gently into your feet to roll the pelvis to 12 o'clock? And then you think of the feet becoming light to help you arch the lower back and go to 6 o'clock. So you just gently press through the feet to roll to 12 o'clock. And then you think of the feet becoming light to help you arch, arch the lower back. And once you've got used to that movement, using the legs, think also of pulling in a spot two inches below the navel to really help that lower back come closer to the floor. And think of pushing out that spot two inches below the navel with your tummy muscles. So don't be shy about doing that. It's very necessary um, to, to, in order to be able to control the lower, lower back. We're so conditioned to hold our stomachs in all the time, but you should be able to pull in the stomach to bring the lower back down and then push out the stomach to help arch the, the lower back. Good. Now, pause once you've done that and then just have the arms long by your side and begin to just slide your left shoulder away from the ear as the right shoulder slides up to the ear. And then switch so as your right shoulder slides away from the ear, the left shoulder slides up to the ear. So you're just alternating lengthening one arm down towards the feet and then the other arm down towards the feet. But see if you can feel, if you're allowing the chest to soften, how um, the ribs sof soften and come together on the side of the arm that's lengthening, and therefore they open on the side that um, isn't lengthening. So just feel that yo-yo movement of one shoulder coming up as the other slides down. And then pause, and then begin to think mostly of lengthening your left arm down towards the, the left foot, so, but, and then come back. So, and see if you can allow the head to slide also to the left too. So I'm not thinking of turning the head or rolling the head, but it's the same point on the back of the head slides to the left to facilitate me being able to lengthen that left arm down. Now, the next time you are side bent to the left, pause there and allow your right knee to fall out to the side, drift out to the side. And you'll notice <clears throat> there is a gap 
or a bridge underneath your left leg from the buttock to the heel, a space there. Could you begin to slide your right foot underneath that gap towards your left hand? So you're just exploring, can you slide the right foot over towards the left hand to see if you can take hold of the foot in the palm, palm of the left hand? and then take your right arm overhead, right arm overhead, the palm towards the ceiling, and very gently begin to use your left hand to slide the right foot a little bit further to the left. And then just ask, what do you need to do in the chest, or what can you do in the chest and the ribs that enables you to slide that foot a little bit further? So you can turn the head and eyes to look towards your right arm. But can you perhaps see how my ribs are softening and how I'm allowing a little bit of my weight to shift into the ribs on the right hand side to facilitate the sliding of the right foot out, out to the left. So again, okay, nothing um, uh, necessary to force here, just be very gentle. When I taught this lesson in class this week, quite a few of my students had a sudden um, attack of cramp as they were just exploring this new position. Okay. Now, once you've done that a few times, carefully undo, bring yourself back to the centre and allow the legs to go long for a moment. And then just notice how that feels, that uh, contact into the floor after that variation. Um, for me, very interesting, my left ribs, left hand side, seems to be a little bit closer to the floor, which I wasn't expecting actually, I thought it would have been the right hand side. Um, uh, please bring the legs back to standing and then begin to just side bend to your right. So you think of lengthening your left, right arm, sorry, down towards the feet and allowing your head to slide on the mat. So, the left, left shoulder will come up towards the ear as the right shoulder slides away from the ear. And then when you are side bent to the right in this way, um, allow your left knee to drift out to the side and then slide it over and see if you can catch your left foot in the palm of your right hand. And then take your left arm overhead, palm towards the ceiling and begin just to explore, can you slide this left foot a little bit further towards the, the right? And, and just explore maybe what could you do in the chest and the ribs to enable you to take that foot a little bit further. So I can feel actually how my right ribs are coming closer together as I allow my weight to shift over to the left hand side of the chest as I pull that right foot over to the left. Good. Now, pause. Please leave it alone and take a, a good, good rest. And now my right side feels a little bit lower and actually it does make perfect sense that that would be lower because some of those movements we've just been exploring have been bringing those right ribs closer together enabling them to sit a little bit more closely um, to the floor. Okay. Once you've stretched out the legs, just roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other. And then pause, bring your legs back to standing. And then once more, side bend your upper body to the left. So you lengthen the left arm in the direction of the feet. I slide the head to the left. And then allow the right knee to drift out to the side once more. And bring that foot over to the left, underneath the bridge of the, of the left leg. And catch your right foot in the palm of your left hand. I should warn you, there's a lot of left and rights going on in this lesson. So you'll need to sort of just pay attention to, to um, those details. And then um, once you've you're there, bring your left 
leg in towards the chest. So, and then once you've brought it into the chest, what will help you to do that is to think of pulling in that lower tummy. You see, if I keep my lower back arched, the knee's going to go further away from me. Whereas if I think of keeping that spot two inches below the navel pulled in, I can bring the knee a little bit closer to the, to the head. So just play with, so I'm just bringing it in an inch or so and let it release, an inch or so and let it release. Each time I bring it in, I'm deliberately thinking of pulling in the, in the tummy. And then once you've done that, begin to move the knee, so you keep it towards the head. Move the knee a little bit to the left, and I do mean a little bit, and then focus on taking it to the right, and then come back. So, a little bit to the left, and then I think of the knee is going to go to the floor on the right, but I'm not trying to get it anywhere on the floor. That's the direction I'm aiming for. So again, think of keeping the tummy pulled in, the knee towards the head, and then begin to direct the knee over to the floor on the right. Now, um, it's very easy to get caught up in the idea the knee has to go to the floor. But actually, what I think is much more interesting about this movement, and hopefully you're discovering it too, is as the knee begins to travel to the right, the left side of the pelvis comes away from the floor. And therefore, we're in the realms of an interesting twist in the spine and the ribs. So, I can feel as the left hip comes away, my ribs on the right hand side are being pressed into the floor. But you'll notice I'm keeping my left shoulder down. And now as you begin to take the knee maybe a little bit further, just pull the right leg a little bit further, foot a little bit further to the left. Just to explore again, no need to get the foot, the knee to the floor, but really just explore, ah, oh, this is doing something quite interesting to my ribs. Good. Now, um, pause, please lengthen the legs and take a good, good rest. Just let everything settle for a moment. And then once you're, you've stretched out, just roll the head a little bit to the right and to the left. And yet again, super interesting my left side it's as though someone's ironed me down into the into the floor so let's do that on the other side so bring both legs to standing and first of all begin by side bending your chest and your arm arms and your head a little bit to the right let allow the left knee to drift out to the side and slide that foot over to the left, to the right, sorry, so you can take hold of the foot in the palm of the hand, um, of the palm of the right hand. And once you're there, bring the right knee in towards the chest and just spend a few moments just thinking, can I bring it a little bit closer to my head? And again, the one thing that will help you to do that, I'm fairly confident, is if you think of pulling in the tummy. So you want to be definitely more to 12 o'clock to help you bring the knee in. You see, if I go to 6 o'clock, that knee is not coming in because my back's getting in the, in, the, in the way. So, And then once you've explored that a few times, just think, can you begin to take the knee over in the direction of the floor on the left, but also in the head direction, rather than letting the knee go away from you. So, and I can feel the right side of the pelvis peeling away from the floor. I'm keeping my tummy pulled in. And, and again, we're in, in the realms of a lovely, lovely twist developing in the, in the ribs. So see if you can begin to add pulling the right foot a little bit further to the right, sorry, the left foot a little bit further to the right as the knee goes to the floor. 
And once you've done that a few times to your satisfaction, pause and take a, a good, good rest. And then when you rest, just roll the head a little bit from one side to the other. And then pause, bring both feet back to standing. Once more, side bend your upper body to the left, so you allow the head to slide, the left arm lengthens down in the direction of the feet. Allow the right knee to drift out to the side, slide the foot underneath the gap of the left leg, take hold of the right foot in the palm of the left hand and now could you go carefully bring the um, left leg in towards the chest and then bring the left foot over to the floor on the right and see if you can take hold of it with your right hand, right hand. Take hold of the right foot, um, so uh, you can take hold of them over the top of the foot or from underneath the foot. I'm going to take hold from over the top. And then just again, giving yourself permission to do a very small movement. Could you just slide that left foot a little bit closer in the direction of the head? And if you're following me on the screen, you'll see it's not a big movement at all. We've got not a big movement of just bringing that foot a little bit closer to the head. And then can you begin to think of bending both arms a little bit as if the feet are going further away from each other. So again, it's not a big movement. And one thing I need to remember to do is to keep my tummy pulled in, pulled in. Good. Now, pause. <clears throat> And then see if you can begin to add a lifting of the head. So as I think of just pulling the feet further apart, I think of lifting the head to look at my tummy and then release. So um, the one thing again that will help you to lift the head is first of all to use the breath. So if I breathe out, it enables these ribs here to soften down and the chest to soften down so that as my head lifts I can feel parts of my back press more firmly into the floor. So, you know, just do what you comfortably can without strain to say so, as if you're taking the feet wider away from each other as you lift the head. And then please pause, leave it alone and again just stretch out the legs. So, um, just as you're resting, again, I, I find this, it's a fascinating lesson, really. As I've mentioned before, as we all get older, what tends to happen is our chest and middle um, becomes quite, um, for want of a better word, stiff or non-adaptable to, to movement. And even though in this lesson we're the instructions are very much given in terms of moving the limbs, the foot or the knee. It's actually an awful lot of the lesson is about what those movements can create in terms of movement and change for your centre, for your ribs and your, and your chest. Now pause, bring the legs back to standing. Side bend your upper body to the right, so the head slides the right arm lengthens down towards the feet. Allow your left knee to drift out to the side and slide that foot over to the right so you can catch hold of the left foot in the, in the right hand. And then bring your right leg in towards you and see if you can bring the foot over to the floor, over to the floor on the left and catch hold of the foot with your left hand either from underneath or from the top of the foot. And, and again, just do a small movement to begin with. Can you slide that foot a little bit further towards the head? And you'll see um, it's such a small movement, you can barely notice it. <laughs> it may be a small movement, but it's a big stretch for some of those hip 
rotator muscles that often get a little bit neglect neglected. Now once you've explored just sliding the foot a little bit towards the head, see if you can, um, as if you're taking the feet wider apart, and as you do that, lift the head and then release. So again, I think of taking a breath in as I breathe out, because I want to use the exhalation to lift the head, I can feel some of those ribs that like to poke out when I'm lying down being challenged to release a little bit and sit down closer to the floor. Good. Now pause, carefully undo, bring yourself back to the middle and again just take a rest. Good rest and notice so those little wiggle movements I often do after a variation is actually because I can feel my ribs wanting just to be in a different place um, on, the, on the floor. Just roll your head a little bit from one side to the other and then pause, come to centre, bring both legs back to standing again, side bend yourself to the left, to the left, so the upper body slides to the left, uh, left arm lengthens down towards the feet, allow your right knee to drift out to the side slide the right foot underneath the bridge of the left leg and take hold of it in the palm of your left hand. So back to that start, starting position. And then please bring your left leg in towards you again and see, can you take hold of the foot, foot with the right hand? So I'm not trying to have the foot down on the floor, it's up in the, up in the air and take hold of the left foot with the right hand. Now again, you can either hold from underneath or from over the top of the foot if that's possible for you. And then can you begin to lift the foot towards the ceiling as you lift the head? So I just think of lifting the left foot up towards the ceiling as I lift the head. And you can try each hand grip to see which suits you better. So I'm lifting the foot as I lift the head. And again, I can feel as the foot goes up, the head lifts. This middle area, if you allow it to soften with the out breath, that area can just sit down towards the floor. So again, I try and stretch the leg up and then come back down. So, okay. Nice, easy breathing, nice, easy pace. You can do as many of these as you like, uh, as you like, but don't over, overdo it. It's not about how high the foot goes, it's much more about what it's doing in terms of the chest. And I'm trying not to let my right knee lift up away from the floor. Good. Pause. Please leave it alone and take uh, a rest. Interesting variation. It's one of those lessons that um, yoga students love, I think, um, partly because of the work in the hips, but also, <clears throat> as you'll see, it develops into a very interesting variation towards the end of the, of the lesson. But <clears throat> Once you have um, rested, bring your legs back to standing. Side bend your upper body to the right, to the right side, so the right arm lengthens down towards the feet, I've, the head has slid to the right, allow the left knee to fall out to the side, slide the foot underneath the gap of the right leg and take hold of your left foot with the palm of your right hand and then bring your right leg in towards the chest and take hold of the foot with your left hand if possible and then begin to do a movement of lifting the foot towards the ceiling as you lift the, the head. So again I think of lifting the head as I stretch the foot up towards the ceiling and release. But in no hurry, just do what you comfortably can on the out breath and then release down all eat every time. And then just see again, can you lift the head, looking at the tummy as you stretch the, the foot up? What can you feel 
pressing down into the floor as the foot lifts. Good. And then pause, leave it alone, and take a, take a good rest. <clears throat> and when you're resting, just roll the head and eyes a little bit from one side to the other. And then pause, bring both legs back to standing. And then once more, slide your upper body to the left. Allow the right knee to fall out to the side. Slide the foot underneath the gap of the left, the bent left leg. And take hold of the right foot in the palm of your uh, left hand. Now, once more, bring the left leg in towards the chest. I'm just going to slide over a little bit to create some room. So you bring the left leg in towards the chest and then see, could you um, think of straightening the leg a little bit and bring your right hand behind the back of the knee. Now I've gone from the inside of the knee, you can also do it from the outside of the knee and begin to use your right hand to direct the leg, the left leg, over, over to the floor on the right and then come back. Okay, now as you do this, careful to keep the tummy pulled in, the lower tummy pulled in, so again it becomes a twist rather than a big arch, um, uh, arch in the, in the spine. So I'm just directing my left leg over to the floor on the right and I'm using my right hand to give the direction so the leg is going more in the sense of the head rather than away from me. So I think of the leg going over and then I come back and again it's really interesting if you take your time, don't be in a hurry. Uh, if you're doing this at home, just to feel, so I'm feeling this a lovely twist going through my spine, through my spine, as I take the leg a little bit further, and then come back. And then as you just explore this a few more times, see as you take the knee, left knee over to the left, can you maybe pull the left the right foot, sorry, a little bit further to the left and then come back. Good. Now pause, leave it alone and take a good rest. Oh. Feels great. <laughs> Feels great. I hope it, hope, hope it does for you at home too. I had some very nice comments on the video I posted last week. I should say I really appreciate those of you um, who are able to take the time to let me know how you got on in the lesson. It's always fascinating for me to, to, to read what you have to say. Um, please bring the legs back to standing. Side bend your upper body to the right. So, and then once you're there, stay there, allow the left knee to fall out to the side. Slide the left foot underneath the gap of the right leg and take hold of the left foot in the palm of the right hand. Pull your tummy in, bring the left, the, sorry, the right knee in towards you. So I'm, I'm trying not to let that left knee lift as well. And then take hold of the, of the right knee with the left hand. And then begin to direct the knee over to the floor on the, on the, on the left and then come back. So again, I'm thinking of keeping my tummy pulled in, trying to make sure I'm breathing, keeping the jaw nice and relaxed. And, but just using my left hand to make sure this leg, the right leg, isn't going away from me, it's coming more towards the head. Just a few more, it feels so good, so good to find this movement travelling through the spine and the, the change in the, in the ribs. Good. 
Now pause once you've done enough of those, leave it alone and take a rest. And you know, I just encourage you, if you are doing it at home and you need a longer rest, please, please take that longer rest. And um, if you need to miss out any variations, do that. Uh, so you're always taking care of, of yourself. So pause, just rest on the back for a second, beginning to feel again a bit taller, which is always, always, a, always a bonus. And then please bring your legs back to standing. Side bend your upper body uh, to the left once more. And then allow your right knee to drift out to the side. And then slide the foot over, the right foot over to the left again, so you can take hold of it with the left palm of the left hand. So, and hopefully that's a bit easier for you to bring that, that right foot over in that way. And then please lengthen your right arm overhead on the floor. So palm is towards the ceiling. So just if you can, take the right arm over overhead. And then bring your left knee in towards the chest again. And if you can, do what you can to straighten the leg. Now, I'm not trying to turn it into a yoga position or anything like that. So just comfortably straighten the leg. And then I'm just sliding a little bit towards the camera because I know what's coming. coming. So you bring the le left leg in towards the chest. Try to straighten the leg to the degree that you comfortably can. And begin to take the leg over to the floor on the right. Good. And then come back. So even if the leg is, is very bent, as you begin to take the leg over to the floor on the right, see if you can then straighten that leg that leg, the left leg, and then come back. So you allow the leg to go over to the floor on the right, and then see if you can straighten the leg. And then think of pushing the leg further away from you. So you stay over to the right and push that leg further away from you. So I'm thinking of pushing the heel further away. So I push and I pull, thinking that's it, how I can allow my, myself to roll through the chest towards my front. And then eventually, the further the leg goes, what will happen is the left, the right le lower leg will come away from the floor. The head will lift to look at your right hand and then slowly, slowly come back. Do so keep the leg over to the side, but push it in the direction of the head if possible, pushing it away to um, help you to lift the head. So as you turn the head to look towards your right hand, I just want to point out something here to you, which I noticed um, happened with a few of my students. So, as you slide the leg further away from me, do be careful about your left shoulder. See, what was happening in class is some students were pulling the shoulder forward, whereas really you want to allow the shoulder to be nice and open, nice and open and tucked into the back. So if you, if you have a look, I'm not trying to pull myself around with my pectoral muscles. I really think of transferring my weight through these ribs and the chest on the right hand side to help lift the head and then come back. Pause. Isn't that such a lovely movement? Um, uh, and again, lo lo uh, I like it a lot. Because all of a sudden, in this slightly quirky, crazy lesson, you get this lovely sense of extension in the spine as you begin to roll more to the, to the front. Yeah. Please um, pause, just take a rest for a second. 
And then once you have rested, bring the legs back to standing. Allow your upper body to slide to the right. And then allow the left knee to drift out to the side. Bring the left foot over to the right, underneath the gap of the right leg. And take hold of the left foot in the palm of your right hand. And then once you've done that, please lengthen your left arm overhead on the floor. So um, palm is towards the ceiling. And then bring your right leg in towards you, pulling in the tummy. And then as you begin to take the leg over to the floor on the left, think of straightening the leg, straightening the leg, and then you can come back. So again, I think of the leg going up and over to the floor on the left. And then once the foot is down, that's it, I think, and you notice how my left foot has come away from the floor a little bit. That's absolutely fine. Think of pushing that leg away from you and pulling it back towards you. Okay. Pushing it away and then pulling it back towards you. And as, as, the, as the right leg pushes out to the left, I can think of my left foot pushing, pushing into my hand to help me lift and extend the spine. Again, such a lovely movement. But do be careful that you've allowed your right shoulder to release. Don't try and keep it pulled forward with the pectoral muscles. Are you breathing as you're doing this? Are you able to keep the jaw nice, nice and relaxed? Oh, it feels so nice. And then once you've done, explored that movement, leave it alone and come and take a rest. And then just notice how that all feels. Just notice the contact that you make into the floor, how the, the legs and arms are resting. Good. And then just very lazily again, just roll the head and eyes a little bit to the left and a little bit to the, the right. Good. And then once you have rested, bring the legs to standing, roll to whichever side is good for you, and then support yourself as you come up to sitting. So, um, really uh, a challenging lesson, I think, um, certainly challenging for a number of my students here in Rutland. Certainly, um, uh, uh, when I first got introduced to it, it was a bit of a shock to the system. So, I hope you were careful. But I love, love the lesson. Absolutely love it. Um, and because it it brings into play all these movements for the spine and the chest that we've been looking at in these lockdown months and uh, i hope you enjoyed it i'd love to know how you got on if you have the time to comment in the comment section below if you haven't already subscribed to my youtube channel then please hit the subscribe button stay safe everybody